grail What's up guys, it's Quinn. It's Alex. It's Iconic Comic and this is our review of La La Land. Picture in the middle. Or it could have faded in. I don't know. We will never know. Uh, this is a film starring Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone, you guys obviously know that, directed by Damien Chazelle. He did Whiplash uh, a couple years back, which was also really, really good. And uh, this is, what'd you say? I said, I, lo I love that movie. Yeah, That's really, a good movie. Uh, this is, I'm, I'm just going to start the review like this. This is the best movie of 2016. And it's opinionated, so it's my best movie of 2016. So take that top five list that we did, <coughs> shift it down one, and put this one at the top. <laughs> we should have we should have watched it last year. It, it was just out. so limited release in December, and it didn't go wide until January. Yeah. For Oscar reasons. Like, we were the only ones in that theater. <laughs> it was in an IMAX theater. And yeah. uh, that's, that's a thing, because this movie, it's got limited release in IMAX. Yeah. I thought IMAX really helped with the scope and the colors of this movie because it's a pretty, it's a pretty movie. Like it's a <laughs> it is, but did it need to be an IMAX though? I feel like you could have gotten the same thing out of it. Yeah, but it's cool to see an IMAX. <laughs> My opinion is that you either see it in IMAX 3D or regular. That's just okay. You know, like if you're going IMAX, you might as well go see it in 3D. And that movie in 3D probably wouldn't have been all that spectacular. The reason I like IMAX is the scale. That's why I like IMAX. Just sit closer. God. <laughs> no, but um, I I had I didn't know how I felt about it going into it. Um, but when I sat down, see when I watch me when I watch musicals, the first song, I never understand, and with. This one I still didn't. It's just me personally, because I'm not in the musical mo mode. Once that first song is over, now I'm in with the tone of the musical and stuff like that. Like um, with Across the Universe, um, starts off with uh, him on a beach. Jim Sturgis. Um, it's like I, like I hear the song. Song sounds really cool. It's a nice, pretty song, but I just I don't. I I, I just never understand it. I think once I get past that, that first song, yeah, exactly. Then I get past that learning curve, and then I'm, then I'm immersed into it, which was the same thing here. And um, you know, the songs in this movie are, they're awesome. Like that, like I've been listening to the soundtrack for like days now because it just gets, they're catchy. They get stuck in your head, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like really, really good. Like jazz, piano, like stuff like that. And the fact that Ryan Gosling spent the time to learn these, you know, piano riffs and songs so that he's mm -hmm. actually the one, because they do a lot of long takes. There's one scene with Emma and Ryan where they're, I love how I didn't say their last name, it's like we're on a first, like we're, we're like a friend ah. basis. But uh, it's a, it, it starts with them singing and it goes into like almost like a tap dance kind of number, but it's a one-shot take, no cuts, no no takeaways, for about ten to twelve minutes, and that's it gives me a headache. Ten to twelve minutes. I went back and watched it, so like, oh, it, it's yeah. like I was like, it didn't feel like ten, twelve minutes, and, it, and that's a good thing. But like, yeah, so yeah. it gives me a headache just trying to think about how many takes they had to do. Like what? Like what if they got all the way to the very end of the song and someone like messed tripped. up a word, or they, or they just tripped, they, or they messed up the dance number? It's like that kind of. And there's a lot of shots like that, not as long, obviously, but just a lot of tracking shots where it's just one shot and they don't cut away and they do almost the whole musical number without cutting away. There's like, a lot wow. of a lot of moving parts too, like that first song. Um, spoiler alert. Um. I mean, it's on the highway. Yeah, I mean it's in the trailers. The, okay. the song that's where they're all on top of their cars. Singing. Yeah, the first song was that was that scene. It's like they're all on the highway. There's like 50 people and there's a, like lines of cars. There's so there's a lot of moving parts that could have went wrong, and I believe that was one take. The, that that didn't fought. cut away at all. No, that's and, insane. Like, um, so I thought that was done really. I believe the whole thing was done. And all of those one takes really make it clear to me that I think this could be a 
Broadway play in a couple of years. I definitely it, it like it. Yeah, there, there, there's no way it won't be. It, it, it serves itself to be that eventually because it's all, it was almost filmed in the style of like a play. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know, like like I said, a lot of one shots, one room scenes, and you know, if you do a scene like in the beginning we we're talking about with all the cars and stuff, I could see that on stage, like starting with one thing and just kind of like the song travels around the stage like that. So yeah. Yeah, there are other parts where I don't think it would translate well to the stage. They'd have to like switch, switch stuff. It would around, have, yeah, it would be difficult, but um, anyway, let's just. Start, um... Right, like, the chemistry between those two. That was amazing. Like, I... We, we've seen them work together before, but I think this this was just different in a good way. You know, um... They, it, it started out with them, like, with in, in traffic, and they just instantly just hate each other. You know, and then, um... I... I can't remember now when the, the, the next time they met. Is in the trailer, obviously, where you see them. Ryan Gosling's in the jazz club, uh, or the little supper dinner club, or whatever, playing the piano, and Emma Stone's sitting there watching him play the piano. So it's like yeah, yeah. Th th their relationship takes a lot of like weird highs and lows uh -huh. throughout the movie, which I I'm not going to spoil the ending, but the way the ending happened was such a kind of, I'm not going to say out of left field, but so different than what you would normally think a movie like this would go. And I loved that. I'm about to spoil it, because what I'm, because like, I can't, I feel like talking about it, I'm, I'm just dancing in circles around it. This movie was a very unrealistic, realistic way that romance is in our day and age. What? Unrealistic in the sense that it's a musical and crazy stuff is happening all the time, but realistic in the sense that their relationship plays out. Okay. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but the, the cinematography Jesus. was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Like in the color, the color palette of the whole movie? Yeah. It, it, it was really bright in places where it was meant to be bright and dark when play, Like... I need to spoil this movie because it's like I I can't just dance around this anymore. No pun intended. All right, we'll put up a little spoiler thing, and then when, Jeez. It's, when it's gone, you can you, you can come back if you haven't watched it. I mean, like the color palette when they have their first fight. I'm spoiling it, but when when they're sitting down and they're they're arguing, then the camera just gets blurry, and it makes you feel what they're feeling. That that was probably the most, like, crazy. Like I can't even. Yeah. Say so that. when I was in the theater watching, they had their fight and whatever. I don't even think this is honestly a big spoiler. Like you think that this movie is going to go by with no conflict. So they had a fight, and uh, the one time this ever happens in the movie, the whole rest of the movie is either tracking shots, basically, or you know standstill camera shots. The camera was basically. They basically used almost like a handheld camera and made it look very jarring and like shaky. Right. Uh, like not shaky cam like in a fight scene, but like trying to follow someone and like you're trying to film them and walk behind them. It's almost like, I know there's a technique and I, I can't remember, we talked about it in, in my film class, but it's like about, a lot of movies use it when it's like almost like a journalist point of view. Yeah. Where it's like it's like we're following paparazzi kind of point of view, and that's what it looked like. Where it was like jarring, and it really made you feel like that's what the relationship is right now. It's like well, because they and jarring. because they they were having the fight. He walked away, and then she's just sitting there, stunned. So the emotion that you feel, like if you've ever been through that, is how the camera looked. It was awesome, you know. Um, and then the times when they were just when when they were clicking. Sparks were flying like in the, um, the planetarium. Yeah, smooth. It was just nice and smooth. The you know the stars it, it aligned. Was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it was this good. This like... movie. I'm gonna take the spoiler thing off. But this movie is uh, definitely a love letter to classic Hollywood films. But at the same time, present day. 
it like from the trailers, it looked like it was set in like the twenties or thirties. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's modern day. It's just in Hollywood where they keep things in the past. Yeah, and like know? even the way the the film starts, you know, it starts, you know, uh, what's the word? I don't know. The the ratio aspect's very small, and then it fills the screen. It says presented in Cinemascope. Oh yeah. Uh, and that's something very old timey. You don't see in movies anymore. Like, what if the Avengers opened up, like, presented in Cinemascope? And when the title card comes up, it's like actually a couple minutes into the movie, it just bam, La La Land. And it's like not the, you know, very, you know, articulate, you know, CGI title card where it'll like come up. It was like bam. It was old school. Like, you know, it was old school. And I, I loved every minute of that. And the same thing with the very end, the end, bam. Like, it was mm -hmm. in your face. <laughs> There's no post-credit scene. Like you know, this is the beginning. This is the end. That's that's how movies used to be. Like, mm -hmm. and I, I just loved how they paid homage to those things. But at the same time, it felt like this could be happening right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the that type of relationship could be happening right now. Yeah. This is why people think that you're gay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um. <laughs> now the characters themselves. I thought were just so just deeply rooted like Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling obviously those two characters were the most developed they're the main characters but even the side characters like uh, John, John Legend we didn't need a lot of backstory we got it from you know what we got it from those conversations between you know Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling about yeah, him. Exactly. Just little short stuff, and then we're like, oh, I'm in this character. I, I understand now. And the way they talked about the other characters, like it, like, like what you said, they talked about it, and we're like, okay, we accept that. Like, he talked about John Legend. Spoiler alert, I guess. I don't know. No. Okay. We didn't say what he said. Like, Whatever. You know. If you're watching our channel, you know. <laughs> um, Go see the fucking movie. <laughs> when he's talking about, like, going on the road and stuff, and... Um, like Ryan Gosling is talking about John Legend. He's like he's a nice guy, but I, I'm trying I'm trying to explain it. Like I, I don't know how to explain it. Oh, he's like he's not saying he's not like like he was describing John Legend. He's like, you know, there, there's nothing really wrong with him. It's just like the way his business practices. He doesn't agree with. He just exactly okay. But then he eventually. And it, even in the trailers, it's like you can see that disagreement with like John Legend saying in the trailer, "How are you going to be?" A revolutionist, if you're such a traditionalist, right? And that's, I think, what their big disagreement is, because Ryan Gosling is his character, a very traditional jazz pianist, trying trying to keep jazz alive in like the old style jazz, yeah. and uh, and that's you know kind of segueing into that. The way they they made me like I, I liked jazz. I was in jazz band when I was in high school, but it was like this movie really gave me a better appreciation for jazz. Yeah, there was a point when he was explaining to Emma Stone's character, they were at this jazz club, and he was explaining what jazz actually is, and there's a big like jazz band playing, and he, he, the way he was explaining it, like it's chaos, you know, one person gets one idea in their head and they roll with it, and another person is just constant conflict and chaos, and, and just to see him as passionate about jazz music like that like it just made me think like I never thought about jazz in that way uh, my final kind of thought about the whole thing in general I'm gonna talk about like the actual singing performances and what made me really love this movie is that they weren't like Grammy winning singing performances mm -hmm. they were like if you took real people and maybe basically gave them a couple singing lessons and they got them to sing like they were yeah but like it's like Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone are like the main voices you hear sing wise throughout the movie and you know it's it's not like you're being knocked off your seat until the third act when Emma Stone brings the freaking house down yeah and you know you can go see that for yourself but you know she brings the house down in the third act but just that really made it real for me I'm like okay they're not like because like in the stuff like Family Opera Jersey Boys and Wicked they're those people singing are just straight professionals like and they're like killing every single note and you feel it and I'm not saying that they're not good singers in this movie they're just believable 
Exactly, because they're because they they played. They didn't play singers. <laughs> exactly, but I I always find it really interesting when actors play people that are going to be actors like that, mm -hmm. like like Emma Stone's character. She was playing a a woman that was working towards being an actress. So the things that she was doing on screen in the movie we saw, she went through that, you know. So she knew how it felt and the emotions that you know um, that go with like the auditions you stand it you stand in front of a camera like this with two people and you say like two or three lines all right thank you for coming and just the Brutal. <laughs> it, like they were so believable as i know they are real people and we forget all the time that they are actual people these are real but um they they just did a really good job with making us believe that they were real people um so I guess we should go ahead and just score this mother. Uh, <laughs> on a pure entertainment, I'm not because no movie's perfect. On a pure entertainment basis alone, this is a ten out of ten for me. I'm gonna give it a nine because I will. I I feel like I'll never get a, give a movie a ten unless. I mean, I, I don't, like, because my... My 10 out of 10, when I say 10 out of 10, I don't mean a perfect movie. When I say 10 out of 10, it was my experience at the movie. I'm not saying, you know what I mean? Like, The Avengers is a 10 out of 10 in my book, just for my pure enjoyment yeah. factor alone. I want to uh, reserve, I want to reserve <laughs> my, my, my 10 out of 10... For something amazingly crazy. Well, <laughs> well, because for me, it's like, okay, if you see a 10 out of 10... Where does it go from there? Like, why... Like, I have, like, four or five of them. <laughs> I like to reserve my 10 out of 10, so um, I'm going to give it a 9. So 10, 9, either way, I I can't recommend it because I used to not be a big Oscar buzz movie watcher. I've become more in the past couple of years, you know, getting into film and movies. And if you're even interested in Oscar buzz or, you know, just good movies in general, go see this movie. Go De support this movie. Definitely go see this movie if you even have any interest in in musicals or Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. Oh yeah, yeah. like I, like I'm pleading, go support this thing. Like you know, give it your money. <laughs> All right. But uh, close yeah, this thing I'll out. close it out. Oh, by the way, did you know that originally it was going to be Miles Teller and Emma Watson? I'm glad it wasn't. Uh, yeah, like I'm not saying it would have been bad, but I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> My. That's another video. That's another video. All right. Let us know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. If you've seen La La Land, you let us know in the comment section down below. Make sure you guys like, comment, share, and subscribe. So you guys don't miss a single thing from the channel. Cue music. Holy grail.